Hey guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering pediatrics. And guys, I've been seeing in the comments, you want more questions, more content. Well, just so you know, I finally opened up a TikTok and I have questions over there as well. And they're different from the videos that I do here on YouTube. The question and the content's different. So if you want that extra studying time, uh, extra questions to practice, make sure that you check out my TikTok, same name, Nexus Nursing. If you haven't done so already, guys, make sure that you like and subscribe below. Let's get started. A three-month-old infant is admitted. Upon admission, the nurse assesses her developmental status as appropriate for age. Which of the following is the child least likely to be able to do? One, smile in response to the mother's face. Two, reach for shiny objects but miss them. Three, hold head erect and steady. Or four, sit with slight support. If you're new to this channel, guy or guys, or you just need some extra time, press pause and whenever you're ready to resume, press play and we will continue. In the meantime, I'll give you a second to formulate your answer. So the correct answer, guys, is four. Sit with slight support. We really don't expect to see an infant doing this until they're around five months old. All the other choices they should be able to do by three months of age. A three-month-old child is doing well after a repair of the cleft lip. The nurse wants to provide the client with appropriate stimulation. What is the best toy for the nurse to provide? One, a colorful rattle. Two, a string of large beads. Three, mobile with mobile with a music box or four teddy bear with button eyes and i'll give you a moment to think of your answer and the correct answer guys is three the mobile with a music box why go back to the question and look to look at what that um infant's in for a cleft lip repair. So we want to make sure it's not a toy that the patient can put into their mouth because with a cleft lip palate repair, we don't want anything in that in the child's mouth, right? So choices one, the rattle, the large beads, the teddy bear with the button eyes, the patient can try to put it in their mouth. But the mobile with the music box, that's above the child. It's moving. It's out of their reach. And they're only three months old. So it's not like they could sit up and grab it or try to put it into their mouth. So that would be the best thing for the child at that age. Which toys would be best for a five-month-old infant who has infantile, ex ex infantile eczema? Eczema, guys, that's a type of atopic dermatitis, okay? Um... One, soft washable toys, two, stuffed toys, three, puzzles and games, or four, toy cars. And the correct answer, guys, is one, soft washable toys. You want toys that are washable, that dust um, and other things can't collect on that toy because this child already has eczema. They have excessively dry skin. They're always scratching their skin. We don't want any triggers for that. Wrong choices, stuffed toys, contraindicated. They collect dust. Anything that's stuffed is contraindicated for the child that has eczema. Three, puzzle games. This child's too young. They're only five months old. They can't do a puzzle. And then you have toy cars. Here's the problem with the toy cars. Now, Besides the fact that they won't even know what to do with the toy cars, forget that. What can that child do with the toy car? Use it to scratch their skin, okay? That's what that eczema is. It's very itchy. And one of the things we are concerned about these children that have eczema, we have to make sure that we keep their fingernails very, very short and we need it to keep it trimmed because what happens, they'll scratch themselves so much, their skin will open up. And now before you know it, pathogens have gotten... Um, through the cut that they cause themselves from scratching and the patient has a secondary infection. So we want to avoid that. Which diversion would be appropriate for the nurse to plan to use with an eight-month-old infant? One, a colorful mobile. Two, large blocks to stack. Three, a colorful rattle. Or four, a game of peekaboo. And the correct answer, guys, is for a game of peekaboo. This infant's eight months old, and they're starting to learn what? 
object permanence, right? Remember where the child starts to learn, even though they can't see something, it's still there. So you hide your face and you go, peek boo you're still there and they're starting to learn object permanence. And so that's a perfect diversion for an eight month old child. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. You have one, a colorful um, mobile, well, here's the problem with that. This child's now eight months old, so they can sit up. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to sit up, reach for that mobile, and pull it down, right? No. Choice two, large blocks to stack. They're only eight months old. They can't do that yet. Three, colorful rattle. They're eight months old. They're too old for that. So the correct answer would be that game of peekaboo, which is wonderful because they are at that age where they're starting to learn about object permanence. Which activity would best occupy a 12-month-old child while the nurse is interviewing the parents? One, a string of large snap beads and a large plastic bowl. Two, writing toy. Three, several small puzzles. Or four, paste, paper, and scissors. And the correct answer, guys, is one string of large snap beads and a large plastic bowl. Now, I want you to notice that word large. They put it on put it there on purpose so you can say in your head, okay, they're not small. I don't have to worry about the child putting it in their mouth and choking on it. That's why they put that word um, large. Now, the riding toy and the s small puzzles, that's actually, let me go back. Let's do the riding toy first. The riding toy, that's more for a toddler, but a toddler that's around two or three. One is too young. Several small puzzles. Uh, we like the larger puzzles for the toddlers because we don't want them putting anything in their mouths. But the larger puzzles, again, that's for the two to three year olds. The smaller ones, we kind of want them at the age where they know better than to put in their mouth and possibly choke, which is more than four or five years of age. And our last choice, paste, paper, and scissors. That's for our preschooler. Okay, that's for our preschooler age. And even with that, remember, it's going to be done under strict supervision of an adult. In planning the care for an 18 month old child, the nurse would expect him to be able to do which of the following? One, button his shirt and tie his shoes. Two, feed himself and drink from a cup. Three, cut with scissors. Or four, walk up and down stairs. And the correct answer, guys, is feed himself and drink from a cup. This child's a one and a half. And guess what? As soon as they hit 12 months, one years old, there's some important milestones here. One of them is that this child is no longer on formula. They get what? Gallon milk. And it's important to teach the parents that they need the whole milk, okay? Because that child at 12 months, they're going to be growing rapidly and they need that fat that comes into the whole milk. So you have to tell them they need gallon milk and it needs to be whole milk, not the 2% or low, the low fat milk. That child is going to be growing rapidly in the next uh, year or so and they need that fat from the whole milk. So that's number one. Number two, no more bottles. We're done with that. She's a big girl or he's a big boy, right? We're not doing bottles anymore. The child starts to drink from a sippy cup preparing them to drink from a regular cup. So that's very important to know. Um, let's look at our other answer choices. We have one, button his a shirt and tie his shoes. We really expect to see that in a school age child around five, six years old. Uh, choice three, cut with scissors. Again, we see that more in the preschool age child. And again, that is with the supervision of adult. And four, this is a famous test question. I don't know why, but for um, nursing school and NCLEX, if, when it comes to peds, they love to ask about it. So make sure you know it. Walking up and down stairs, three years old. They love to ask about that and um, tricycles. But tricycles is easy to remember because there's three wheels in the tricycles, three years old. Okay, so tricycles walking up and down stairs, three years of age. The mother of a two-year-old child asks the nurse how to cope with the child's frequent temper tantrums when he does not get what he wants immediately. What information should the nurse include when responding? One, as long as the child is safe, ignore him during the tantrum. Two, if the child's demands are reasonable, give him part of what he wants. Three, spank the child if the, t 
come on guys. Spank the child if the tantrum continues for more than five minutes. Four, explain to the child why he cannot have what he wants and promise him a reward when he stops crying. And the correct answer is one. As long as that child is safe, you're going to ignore that behavior. Okay, we don't reward bad behavior. So you tell mom, if you're in the supermarket and they want this type of cereal and you say no and they throw themselves on the ground and they start kicking and screaming, keep on walking. Keep on walking and look at you know the other things in the aisle. Make sure you're keeping your eye on the child at the whole time you know, the whole time, but you let them have that tantrum because they will start to learn. Because what, what's happening here when these um, toddlers are throwing these tantrums, what's really happening is they're starting to explore their autonomy, their independence. So they're starting to push the envelope to see how far they can get and how autonomous they can be. And this is something that's very normal. It's part of the growing process. You just have to make sure that they're safe um, during that time. All of these other choices, if you guys have been following my videos for any amount of time, you know what I say about um, toddlers. They are tiny terrorists. That's what they are. And guess what? We don't negotiate with terrorists. So choice two, three, and four, forget about it. We do not neg negotiate with terrorists, okay? You're going to ignore the behavior, but make sure that they're safe at all times. Three-year-old child is admitted to the pediatric unit for a diagnostic test. His mother's discussing the child's hospitalization with the nurse. She's concerned about staying with the child and caring for her two children at home. Which suggestion to the mother will be most helpful to adjust, excuse me, most helpful to help the child adjust to being in the hospital? One, do not visit the child until discharge so that your child won't cry when you leave. Two, spend the night in the hospital with your child. Three, bring your child's favorite teddy bear and security blanket to the hospital. Or four, buy your child a gift to let your child know you care deeply. All right, guys, so the correct answer is three. You want to bring their favorite teddy bear and security blanket. Why? That is a security blanket for them. It gives them a sense of security, a sense of comfort, a sense of familiarity. If mom has kids at home and she cannot stay there, you want to do the best next best thing. Have mom bring in things that the child loves, that the child's familiar with, so that child can have a sense of security and familiarity. Now let's look at our other answer choices. One, telling mom not to visit until discharge that is counterproductive. That actually will increase the child's anxiety. We don't want to do that. Choice two, spend the night in the hospital with your child. We would love for mom to be able to do that. But in the question, it tells us that she has children to care for at home. So ideally, yes, we would love that. But if it's not possible, the next best, best thing is to make the child feel as comfortable and secure as possible. And the last choice was... <laughs> buy your child a gift to let them know you care deeply. This is a toddler. This is a three-year-old. This isn't a teenager. Ooh, okay, mom, thanks for the Xbox. Deuces, see you later. No, this is um, a three-year-old where they watch you there. They watch you there all the time. They still, they're still... Um, struggling with separation anxiety, especially during scary moments such as being hospitalized. So buying them a toy really won't be as meaningful as bringing in the toy that they already know, they're already familiar with, that they already have memories about to make them feel secure. The parents of a three-year-old child are leaving for the evening. Which behavior would the nurse expect the child to exhibit? One, wave goodbye to the parents. Two, cry when the parents leave. Three, hide his or her head under the covers. Or four, ask to go to the playroom. And I kind of gave you the answer to this already on the last question when I talked about the toddler and the three-year-old. They have what? They're experiencing separation anxiety. You know, this is a very anxious situation where the patient is in the hospital. They're scared. So once they see that parent leaving, they are going to throw a, matter of fact, because I was going to say they're going to throw a tantrum. Matter of fact, they don't even have to see the parent leaving. The minute they see the parent stand up from the, from the chair or grab the purse or grab the keys, they're wailing, they're screaming, they're, they're doing the most, okay? 
So the correct answer is to cry when the parents leave. They're exhibiting separation anxiety. A five-year-old child has major surgery several days ago and is allowed to be up. When planning diversional activities, which action by the nurse is most appropriate? One, give the child a book to read. Two, play a board game with the child. Three, encourage a child to play house with other children. Or four, turn on the television so the child can watch cartoons. And the correct answer is three, guys. Encourage the child to play house with other children. Look at the age of the child. Five years old. They're at the stage where they're doing what? Cooperative play. And I want you to notice all the other choices, choices one, choices two, choices uh, four, were all solitary play, right? But that sh the five-year-old has passed solitary play, and now they're into what? Cooperative play where they're playing um, with other children. A six-year-old child's admitted for a tonsillectomy. Considering the child's age, which of the following would be the most important to include in a pre-op physical assessment? One, characteristics of tongue, gum, or lip sores. Two, any sign of tonsillar inflammation. Three, the number and location of any loose teeth. Or four, the location and presence of tenderness in any swollen lymph nodes. And the correct answer, guys, is three. The number and location of any loose teeth. Why? Look at the age. They're six years old. So this is around the time that they're losing their baby teeth. So you want to make sure there's no tooth that's loose because remember... With the surgery, child's going to be getting anesthesia. They're going to be intubated. So what we don't want is for there to be loose, a loose tooth. When they get intubated, um, it detaches and the ch that child aspirates. Because remember, they're not going to have any swallowing, any reflex. They're under anesthesia. So we don't want that aspiration to happen. The nurse is preparing a six-year-old child for cardiac surgery. Which pre-op teaching technique is most effective? most appropriate, excuse me. One, have the child practice procedures that will be performed post-op, such as coughing and deep breathing. Two, arrange a child to tour the operating room and surgical intensive care unit. Three, encourage a child to draw pictures illustrating the operation. Or four, arrange the child to discuss heart surgery and post-op events with a group, with a group of children who have undergone heart surgery. The correct answer is one. Okay, this child is six years old. So at that age, they learn by what? Doing. So you have them practice turn, cough, deep breathing. Remember how um, you always teach the patient about what they'll be doing post-op, but you teach it pre-op. So you have them practice it. At six years old, they learn by doing. And so that's how you're going to teach them. Choice two, arrange um, a tour. That's for an older child, an older school age child, 10, 11, not six. At six years old, that will only increase their anxiety. And the reason for that, at six years old, they can't think conceptually, okay? So if you want to teach them, they have to actually do it to learn, but they can't think conceptually. So that doesn't work for a six-year-old child. Choice three, encourage them to draw pictures. Well, encouraging a, a six-year-old child to draw pictures is wonderful when you want them to express their feelings, but not if you're trying to teach them. You're the one teaching them. Why are you going to have them draw pictures? Does that make sense? And then choice number four, arrange for the child to discuss the heart surgery and post-op events with a group of children who've undergone the heart surgery. At six years old, they really don't have the verbal or emotional capacity to um, talk about it in descriptive terms. This is something that you actually want to have a teenager do. And let me explain this to you. I'm going to get off topic for a moment, but this is a famous test question with peas. So you have to know this. Um, I always tell you, if you watch my videos um, before, when it comes to peds, the work of the child is play. That is how they learn about their environment. They, 
they explore, it's play, okay? First playing by themselves, then playing with other children. The work of the adolescent, the work of the teenager is socialization. It is through socialization, they find out their own identity. What is it that sets me apart? What is it that makes me special? What is it that makes me part of a group? Because teenagers, they want to be separate. Oh, I have my own identity. But at the same time, they want to fit in. They want to look and act like they're friends, right? So socialization is their work. So when it comes to uh, teenagers being hospitalized, it is very important that you get that teenager to link up with other teenagers in the hospital that have gone through the same thing because they can have someone to talk to who've gone through what they've gone through, allow them to have a telephone or have access to a phone so they can still communicate with friends because socialization is the work of the adolescent, just like play is the work of the child. All right, next question. A 10-year-old boy who was immobilized in a cast following an accident has been squirting other children and the staff with a syringe filled with water. The nurse wants to provide other activities to help him express his aggression. Which activity would be most appropriate? One, cranking a wind-up toy. Two, pounding clay. Three, putting charts together. Or four, writing a story. And the correct answer, guys, is two, pounding clay. As the nurse, you want to help him channel his aggression in another way. Now, notice, it didn't say agitation. It didn't say irritation. It said aggression. That child is angry. So what's a great way to help them channel their aggression? Pound on clay. Get it all out, but get it all out in a safe manner where you're not hurting yourself or anyone else and you're not annoying anyone else at the same time. A two-year-old child is hospitalized for a fractured femur. During his first two days in the hospital, he lies quietly, sucks his thumb, and does not cry. Which is the best interpretation of his behavior? One, he's made a good adjustment to being in the hospital. Two, he's comfortable with the nurses caring for him. Three, he's experiencing anxiety. Or four, he does not have a good relationship with his parents. The correct answer is three, he's experiencing anxiety. And guys, I'm, a, I'm gonna take this a step further because this is a two year old. That guys, I'm sorry, whenever I come into the studio, I don't know what it is in here. My nose is always running, sorry. Um, What was I saying to you? Yes. This is a two-year-old that is in a new setting, a new environment. They're being poked and prodded. They're in the hospital, right? They're not crying. They're lying still. They're lying quietly. They're sucking their tongue, sucking their tongue, sucking their thumb. Not only is this child exhibiting um, anxiety, this child is exhibiting severe anxiety. What we see here is despair. That's despair in reaction to the severe anxiety that this child is experiencing, okay? So one, two, and four is absolutely wrong because at two years old, that child is hospitalized. We expect that child to throw tantrums, to cry, to kick, to scream. Whenever they see the white coat come through the door that they start screaming and they're trying to get away, that's what we expect to see. When we don't see that, we know that that child is extremely anxious and they're in a state of despair, okay? And we're already down to our last question. A hospitalized two and a half year old child has a temper tantrum while her mother is bathing her. Her mother asked the nurse how she should handle this behavior. What information should be included in the nurse's reply? One, temper tantrums in a hospitalized child indicate regression. Two, tantrums suggest a poorly developed sense of trust. Three, discipline is necessary when a child has temper tantrum. Four, this behavior is a normal response to limit setting in a child this age. And I know you guys all got this answer because we talked about temper tantrums in the temper tantrums in the toddler 
several times and so you guys know it's four. This is normal behavior. Um, they're learning autonomy. They're learning to uh, push the envelope because they want to see how far they can get. And so this is normal behavior. We just want to make sure that it happens safely and we teach mom to ignore the behavior. Guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you want to see more videos like this, as far as a pizza's a concern, please make sure that you leave me a message in the comment section. I'll try to get some more pizza out there for you. Again, guys, let me just tell you this, guys. Um, I did my first TikTok video, not yesterday, but the night before. I did it that night while my son was at soccer practice. I went to bed, I had seven followers. I woke up in the morning to seven thousand followers and some change and on youtube i think i'm like at 3200 right now overnight I, I you guys know i'm old i don't know anything about technology i'm trying but um i've decided and this is a great format i'm getting a lot of great feedback from students who are in the nursing program or they're studying for nclex they love it um i'm going to be offering different content on there that I offer here. So if you've gone through all my videos and you're like, Professor D, I need some more, I need some more, go ahead, hop, hop, hop onto TikTok. My page is the same, it's called Nexus Nursing and just binge watch videos there. I got lots of content there already and lots of content coming. If you haven't done so already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe below. Please help support this channel. And you do that, guys, by sharing my content. Anyone you know that's in a nursing program that has graduated or studying for their boards, please share. Share on your social media. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video.